Hi everybody, Matt back with you, hope you're okay. Today we begin our story from the magnificent Peace Hall in Halifax Town Centre. This place has become a very, very popular music venue in the last two or three years. And over summer, big bands, present and past, come and play here on stage. It's just getting ready for its Christmas market. The background is kind of Victorian era carousel and rides. It works today, but at times at Peace Hall has fallen flat on its face. And it's not the only entertainment venture that necessarily hasn't worked. Because over a hundred years ago, can you believe that Halifax had a zoo? You're of a certain generation, i.e. my generation, it may well be, if you put the words Halifax and Zoo together, you think of a fairly notorious nightclub of Halifax from the 1990s. Let me know if that's what you thought of. But no, there truly was a zoo in Halifax. Just behind me is a bar in Halifax called the Meandering Bear. It's been here a few years and you might be able to see the sign for it just there and this bar is actually linked to the zoo itself because the reason it's called meandering bear is because there was a meandering bear once roaming through Halifax escaped from the zoo so I'm going to tell you that story and I'm going to head to where the zoo was So the zoo opened in 1909, just at the end of the Victorian era. And back then, Halifax was a complete mill town. People working and living in Halifax, working in mills, often six days a week. And they needed places to go and escape to on the weekends. So a zoo seems like a pretty good idea. And one of those mills is where I am now. This is the former John Holdsworth's mill. And believe it or not, I worked here between 1996 and 2001. Most of the mills are gone now around here. They've either been demolished or they're in ruins or they've been turned into other things. And this one I'm walking past at the moment is I think called Sedborough Mill. And looks like they may have started some work here. Holdsworth, thankfully, although the business closed, I think around 2004, five, um, it, most of it is in use as other things, other businesses, otherwise it would have possibly suffered the same fate as some of these. However, this isn't a video about Holdsworths, but it's just an example of how many mills were around and the size of them. Thousands and thousands of people working in these mills in Halifax. <laughs>
when the zoo opened in 1909, it was the brainchild of animal collector Alfred R. McKill. And he'd collected animals on his travels and opened the zoo just a bit further up the hill from us here in Siddle, an area called Chevin Edge. And it was absolutely huge. They had over a thousand animals, all the animals you'd expect to see at a zoo. Bears, elephants, um, a lion, um, monkeys, pythons, donkeys. But, unfortunately, the whole thing was plagued by disaster, animal cruelty and animal escapes. McKill was known to travel around this area, Siddle, Salter Hebel and Halifax, with a camel as a sort of promotional material for drumming up support for the zoo. And at the Whitsuntide Bank holiday in May 1909, the zoo opened. That opening weekend saw 50,000 people descend on the zoo. There was a parade through the town, but even day one started with disaster. Leading the parade was the undoubted star of the zoo, the elephant whose name I cannot repeat because it's an incredibly racist term. Remember, as I said, 50,000 people descended upon Halifax that day to come to the zoo. And the elephant was leading the parade. It was already startled by a large group of people that had turned out to watch it. But then a train pulled in to what was then Salter Hebel Station and a ton of people got off the train probably immediately started going look look an elephant the elephant was frightened and in actual fact charged at the crowd of people who just got off the train and everybody had to scatter and run away thankfully that day nobody was hurt but in time both people and animals were so it seemed that every few weeks in the newspaper there was a report after report after report of incidents and accidents and allegations about the zoo that was just here next to me. Things like a lady attacked by a wild boar. It doesn't go into too much depth about the fact that she was teasing the boar and it leapt over a three foot fence to attack her. The elephant who was in the parade appears again and this time charges at a man who's visiting traps him in a corner but doesn't attack him and then of course there are also the escapes a fox okay but here in the woods Exley woods there was also once a roaming escaped bear So this is the route the bear took to get into the woods. This is Exley Bank and it came on this way. Started off down the cobbles but it's still avoiding people. And I'm not sure if it would have been these particular steps uh, back in 1913 down into the woods here. Roar, roar, I'm a grizzly bear, roar, yeah. I'm not a bear. <laughs> a 
Look what awaited it when it reached the bottom. So I'm sorry it's quite noisy despite the fact it looks like a nice peaceful woodland. Excellent wood we are next to a uh, very busy road. It leads into Halifax uh, via Salter Hebel. And we are next to kind of an old quarry. And this is where <laughs> the bear came to. Um, so there were two bears that escaped at the same time. Um, a Russian bear and a grizzly bear. And they left the zoo and ended up um, in these woods here. Now, the Russian bear was apparently caught fairly quickly, but the grizzly evaded capture and ended up in the woods just here for quite a few hours. Uh, people kind of dodged out of its way to escape it. Um, yeah, how amazing would that be? So now we're in the location of the famous zoo escape of the grizzly bear. Possibly the most disturbing story from the time of the zoo is not cruelty from the owners, although they did horrendously whip and jab at their animals, but it was actually the great British public who inflicted the most pain on the animals. Because what they used to do, the animals were in cages and they would come with an umbrella and start jabbing at the animals this is the public jabbing at the animals through the cages which obviously wound them up made them angry but then they decided to try and inflict even more pain on the animals and they would stick long nails into the end of their umbrella so that when they jabbed them through, the animals were being stabbed by the nails. It was causing horrendous injuries. There was even a press release that went out asking the public to stop doing what they were doing by attacking the animals with nails. It's the most evil story <laughs> imaginable. It's just, yeah. The great British public. Nice one. So, with the bear heading towards the woods here, Exley Woods, it was followed with people scattering all over by the zookeeper as well as a cordono, a lion tamer and they tried to catch the bear. No success at all. Mr. Cordono appeared some time later with his clothes ripped to shreds. I'm not sure quite what happened, had he tried to grapple with the bear? However, the bear had won on that occasion. For two hours the bear roamed free here in the woods, but was eventually caught. Oh, different animals in the woods today. You see the fluffy white tail of a deer. Well, I certainly think that bear knew what it was doing coming into woods here. What an extraordinary woodland. It's just a shame it's so close to the road and it's also next to the uh, um, sewage works. <laughs> it doesn't smell very fresh either. Um, yeah, fascinating quarries and everything here. 
Yeah, I just really enjoyed having a roam around the woods here. The last taste of freedom before it went back in a cage. And however, this was in 1913. By 1916, the zoo had completely gone. So despite all the attacks, escapes, and abuse of the animals, in the end, that wasn't what closed the zoo down after seven years. It was actually the war. They seemed to be unable to get hold of the supplies that the animals needed, and obviously dwindling numbers by 1916. So that was it. The animals were sold off to other zoos across the UK and beyond. And as I said earlier, by the 1930s, the zoo had gone completely. Now, because of all the, you know, the incidents that went on here, I don't think it's really ever going to be something that's looked back on as being a good idea. Now, there's nobody around today who will remember it. Um, but there's no denying it was a still massively successful venture for Halifax in terms of bringing people in. But yeah, I think it's for the best that it's not here anymore. But where exactly was the zoo? It's interesting just walking here past these houses. Uh, this is actually a filming location. Um, if you've seen the TV show The Moor Side, which is about the Shannon Matthews uh, story, and the girl under the bed, um, that was actually filmed here um, because then they didn't have to film where it actually happened on Dewsbury Moor. Apparently, it looks very similar. Anyway, back to the zoo. Okay, so now I'm in the location of where the zoo stood. This area is called Chevin Edge Crescent. It's at the top of, I think, Exley Hill. All this is now uh, a housing estate. I'm not sure quite how old it is, but I know the zoo disappeared entirely by the 1930s. There's rumours that there could potentially still be one building left, but I don't know quite where it is, but we'll have a, a quick walk up and down the estate. So here we go, walking where the zoo was. I wonder what was in this specific location right now where I'm stood. Was there a building? Was there a cage full of animals? It's interesting, isn't it? That was the estate, and come out on Exley Lane. I don't know quite how far the zoo spread. We're now in an area that's we're still on Exley Lane. Just there is Chevin Edge Crescent, where the zoo was. But for it to have had a thousand animals, it must have been much bigger. These are all still new buildings as well. We've got Siddle Rugby Club. Siddle, I think the Siddle School is just to the left of us here. Much, much newer buildings. There is supposed to be. Or well, there was on a report that there was one building left. I'm not sure if it's the old uh, little hut that we passed in a, a moment ago. I'll walk on here a little bit, see if there is anything that might resemble an old building, which could have been from the time of the zoo. Um, but if you know which one it is, if you're watching this guy, you missed it. Just tell me where it is. <laughs> I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, the only surviving part of the zoo. And obviously it doesn't look anything like what it would have been back then. I'll head on, see if we can find it, and I'll head back. So there we go. The area beyond, as far as you can see. Almost. It's not to Wayne Tower. That was Halifax Zoo.
So there we go. That is the story of the meandering bear of the Halifax Zoo and a brief look at the zoo in general. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, you may have heard the story. Let me know if you have. And all the usual things, why not like, share, comment, subscribe if, uh, if you have enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it very much. So for now, we'll leave you from a sunny Halifax. I was going to say a cold Halifax. It's not too bad. We'll see you for the next video, which is coming to be up on Monday. And this weekend, I'm heading to London. And I will put a spell on you. There's your clue. See you soon, guys. Take care. Bye for now.